Hello, I'm Janice Smith, and it brings me great pleasure to be your moderator along with Dave Hardy. We are here for the great all-day candidate debate in Scarborough. Now, it's a public forum that's intended to connect the community residents in Scarborough with the candidates so that we may be able to make an informed decision at the polls on October the 22nd. I would like to welcome the panel at this time. And to my direct right, we have Jude Catino, Norm Kelly, and Michael Kornuski. Um, I also would like to welcome the audience here that took the time out of their schedule to come and watch this live. And for those who would like to watch it online, we are live streaming at www dot netwin dot place forward slash live and this debate is sponsored by snap scarborough a community paper that helps you stay involved and helps business to grow by developing and marketing campaigns that include free pr now at this time i would like to go over the format a little bit uh, for each candidate so that they could get a, a good understanding as to what is going to take place in the next little while each candidate um, will make an opening statement with no interruptions. They will be given two questions that we have prepared, Dave and I, prior that you have received. And then the next set of questions were the ones that were um, given or the ones that we received from the audience when they arrived earlier today. Each candidate will have one minute to respond to all of the questions and your opening statement that you will start with, you also have one minute. The other thing I'd like to share with you and the audience is that you do have an opportunity to make a rebuttal to two of the statements or the questions that your, your opposing candidate has answered or, um, or commented on. And if you use those during the duration of the debate, then uh, it will not be added to your final arguments or your closing statements. So with all that said and done, let the debates begin. We will start with opening um, comments by Jude Catino. Good morning. Um, my name is Jude Catino, Ward 22, Scarborough Agent Court, and I'm a follower of uh, Lord Jesus, a uh, catechist in the Roman Catholic Church. I would like to start with quoting Isaiah 24 verses 5 and 6, which reminds us that the earth is polluted under its inhabitants, for they have transgressed laws, violated the statutes, broken the everlasting covenant, therefore a curse devours the earth. So we have to remember that mankind, when I say mankind, I'm not saying just broadly as humankind as some people say today, but mankind is made in the image of God, male and female, <laughs> And we have a body and a soul. So what happens to our body depends on how we respond with our soul. And what happens to our soul is how we respond with our body. We are all destined for eternal life. It could be in heaven or it could be in hell, depending on what choices we make today. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Norm. Well, thank you for the opportunity of participating uh, in this event. Uh, a councillor has basically a dual role. One is to look after the city of Toronto, and that uh, is often forgotten. Uh, the second is to look after the communities that constitute the ward. Uh, and I'm delighted to say that I've had 24 years of experience successfully in doing both. Thank you, Norm. Michael? Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael Korsniewski, and I am running in Scarborough Agent Court for City Council because through my past volunteering efforts on many campaigns, I've heard people's complaints at the door that very little has been done for them, and they feel sidelined by the politicians. As a firm believer in direct democracy, I want to restore the relationship between the government, the elected uh, representative, and the people by setting an example. Uh, I pledge to always work directly with the people, to maintain an open door policy, to be responsive and willing to help, and to be the people's voice at City Hall, so that they can help form policies on many issues affecting them. 
I will make every effort to be tough on crime, easy on the taxpayer, uh, in favor of the expansion and modernization of our transit system worthy of a world-class city, and I will be a voice for making housing more affordable. Thank you all. And now we will uh, turn um, to the next portion, which is the question uh, that we have prepared for you. The first one is, if elected, what do you propose you want to accomplish for the people in your ward? What is your, the, the one that you, the thing that you hope to accomplish? We will start with Michael. All right, so Janice, uh, I will work tirelessly, tirelessly to ensure that Scarborough Agent Court will prosper again after over 30 years of mismanagement on all levels of uh, government. My priority will be to work closely and directly with the people uh, by introducing regular quarterly town hall meetings th so that I can help them address their issues and concerns. I envision a Scarborough Agent Court that will have a subway that will help decongest rush hour traffic allowing the people to comfortably get from agent court to the downtown core. The subway will be good for local businesses, homeowners, and those living off of the minimum wage. I will fight to keep our streets safe by working closely with our police force to introduce programs uh, aimed at deterring such tragic events as we saw the other day at Birchmount and Shepherd. I will promote investment in small businesses so that we can create more jobs that will contribute to the reduction in crime and will stop our young and older talents from leaving this city. I will work closely with recent graduates and our seniors to ensure that they stay in the city. I will be a voice for building more affordable housing units which Thank can you. be accomplished in a fiscally Thank responsible you. way. I believe that buzzer means your time is up. <laughs> Norm? Well, the most um, challenging uh, um, of the initiatives that um, uh, are presented uh, today and going forward uh, are the uh, proposals for the uh, residential intensification along Shepherd Avenue, in particular uh, Agent Court Mall. Uh, and it's critical that these uh, new buildings and communities are not only attractive, but they uh, complement the existing communities into which uh, they're being uh, introduced. Uh, in the northern end of the ward, uh, Bridletown Hub, uh, a wellness center involving the hospital, uh, the Y, and social services um, uh, has to be uh, finalized. We've got the hospital now. We, the other two parts are yet to come. And linking, I think, all the communities together uh, is the emergence of rooming houses that um, tend to detract from the quality of the appearance of the communities that uh, make up uh, Ward 22. Thank you, Norm. Jude? Thank you. Um, my main goal is to raise awareness of the evil effects of abortion and euthanasia. And even our national anthem says, God keep our land. Now, if you look, if you look at Isaiah 1, 15 to 16, it says, when you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, remove the evil of your doing from before my eyes, cease to do evil. So we are living in a society which is denying the, the bad effects, the evil effects of the sin in our land. And so we have got to acknowledge that, we got to address that, we got to look at some other options. Maybe adoption could be a better option to uh, abortion or euthanasia, the helpless, the weak, the old, the fragile. Euthanasia is not the only option for them. Maybe they need more care, love, and support. Once we build the fabric of our society, we will ex experience the blessings of God. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. And now for our next question. What is the key, the one key issue you want to solve if you are elected as counselor? And we will start with Norm uh, Kelly, this one here. Well, the most uh, important challenge facing the city of Toronto and many of its communities, of course, uh, is uh, the shootings and the murders that result from them. I think that the uh, response uh, should be first, more police officers on the street, uh, more eyes on the gangs, 
uh, more money invested in the uh, anti-drug, anti-gang uh, task force. Uh, and thirdly, more community uh, officers on the streets uh, as well. Um, and supplementing that are investments in the mentoring and educational programs in uh, challenged communities to give their youth a path out of uh, their uh, challenged community and provide them with an alternative to gang life. Thank you. And June? The, the key issue uh, for my ward is, again, raising the awareness. Uh, I may sound like a broken record, but a way to reach a point where we can acknowledge, acknowledge our sin of abortion in Indonesia and other sins which are leading to gun violence and other things as well. That's a ripple effect. But the cause is these things. And so we look at Psalm 32, verse 3 to 5. It says, while I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long, for day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. And again, if you look at Proverbs 28, verse 13, it says, no one who conceals transgression will prosper, but one who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. So we have got to fix the issue. We don't want a band-aid treatment of saying, get more police, get more this. We want to acknowledge, live a good life, and bear the good fruit as well. Thank you. Thank you. Michael? The number one issue that I would like to resolve in Scarborough Agent Court would be uh, to extend the Shepherd subway. Uh, this is the number one uh, issue that I've heard at the door. Volu I volunteered on many past campaigns, and this is the number one thing that I've heard from people. They want that Shepherd extension built. Um, and to clarify to everybody, that's uh, the Don Mills line that ends right at Fairview Park. Uh, we have the infrastructure in place. We need to take advantage of it fully to build a true citywide transit network. My vision is for two stops, one at Shepherd and, Ken uh, Shepherd and uh, uh, Victoria Park, one at Kennedy and Shepherd, and I want that line to go all the way to Port Union, uh, the final station being uh, the Port Union GO station. Uh, I would like to work with our highly productive provincial government by voting in favor of the province taking over the building of transit infrastructure. Um, and this would ensure that the subway, the proposed LRTs, and other projects would be built seamlessly and quickly, decongesting traffic and keeping Scarborough residents out of the cold and connecting us with areas outside the municipality with ease. Thank you. Time is up. Now, just before I turn it over to Dave, I just want to find out, is there any, uh, any of you uh, wish to rebuttal any of the comments or the answers to uh, the questions uh, so far? This is a nice, friendly debate. <laughs> okay, I am going to now turn it over to Dave, who uh, has a couple of questions to ask you from the audience. Well, thank you, Janice. Uh, we've been gathering questions uh, throughout the morning and in, in advance of uh, this particular debate, and um, I can't get to them all. If uh, I'm not answering or posing your question, please come up and talk to the, the candidates after the meeting so that you can get a direct response. Uh, first question um, is, uh, I understand, has been uh, particularly interesting to our, our uh, cultural groups in, in North Scarborough. Um, and it goes that uh, the municipality has a right to opt out of cannabis retail stores. What's your position on this? What measures would you propose to prevent cannabis from our children and youth? And uh, uh, Jude, why don't we start with you? Sure, thank you. And uh, the the attitude uh, of the of the people uh, towards cannabis and you know the new legislation coming is a very defeated attitude a very resigned oh what can i do oh it's going to come anyway and my my uh, my opinion to you is don't take that stand don't say what can i do it's too late it's hopeless you have got to say we don't want it on our streets we don't want it on our for, with our children and so the other way to do is to build up our children. We look at 1 John 2, 14. It says, I write to you, young people, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. And again, in Psalm 
119 verse 11, it says, I treasure your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. So sinning against my body, putting this drug in my body, is going to harm me. And so educating the people, the youngsters especially, will be a big help. Thank you. Thank you. Norm, your response, please. There are two major weaknesses, I think, uh, in the uh, provincial legislation. The first is, even if you opt out as a municipality, the province is still going to sell marijuana online. So you, you, can't, it's, you cannot escape it. Uh, secondly, um, you will be able to smoke um, marijuana uh, in any place where you could smoke cigarettes. So uh, that, I think, uh, has to be addressed because uh, I think there are a lot of places uh, where you and I um, would feel that it's inappropriate to smoke marijuana. It would be akin to, uh, you know, people standing around the outside of a, a commercial office building drinking. That would be inappropriate. Uh, and uh, similarly, I think it would be inappropriate to have uh, uh, cannabis smoked uh, uh, publicly as being proposed uh, by the provincial government. Thank you. Okay, Michael. All right, Dave. Uh, the issue here that we're addressing is uh, it's largely the legalization is a federal issue and uh, uh, provincial in terms of how it's being sold, as uh, Mr. Kelly here mentioned. Uh, so with respect to the neighborhood in Scarborough Agent Court, the one thing that we can do is, uh, what I would do is have consultation meetings with uh, the public to see exactly where they want to stay away. Uh, make it. I want to make it clear that I've been against the legalization of marijuana. I feel it was a bad idea on the federal uh, level. And I feel that uh, what we need to do is consult with the public and see um, that it stays away from schools, daycares, uh, where possible. Um, and it is problematic that the provincial government did, in fact, legislate that it, uh, that it ought to be, that would be allowed to be smoked where um, where cigarettes are. So um, uh, I would hold meetings uh, with, with the constituents to see what we can do to prevent it from being smoked where children are around. Good, thank you. Any rebuttal or, or uh, comments on anything what folks have said at this point? Okay. We've had a, 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 every debate, we've had questions on transit. And Michael, you talked a bit about your position on, on transit along Shepherd, but I can open it up a bit. Um, uh, what's your thoughts on not only uh, the Shepherd line, is it should be subway or LRT, but also the, the Scarborough uh, subway? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, subway, LRT, or LRT in general? So let me just get a general uh, view of what your thoughts are. And Michael, why don't we start with you? I know you've got some thoughts already formulated. Right. Well, I'm, my preference is to have subways built, no question about it. Uh, it's a long-term investment uh, in, in city infrastructure especially when we're talking about the Shepherd subway. The infrastructure is there. It's an incomplete line. Lots of people call it the stubway because it's, it's just a five-stop uh, subway. Uh, we need to extend that line. That's what a vast majority of the people want. It's good for business. It's good for homeowners. Uh, it's good for investment. Um, the problem with LRTs is although they can be built in half the time a subway, uh, it congests traffic. We only need to look as far as St. Clair uh, to see the practical issues with that. Uh, so I, I'm not in favor of LRTs. Subways take longer to build, absolutely, but it, it's a long-term investment for the people of Scarborough. Uh, we want to get the residents of Scarborough out of the cold. We want to uh, have them travel from one part of the city to the other uh, comfortably and quickly. Thank you. Norm, please. Well, I uh, voted for the uh, Shepherd Subway when I was a Metro Councillor. Uh, and uh, in those days, we uh, paid 25% of the costs and the province paid 75%. We went to our funding partner who said, we don't have enough money to take you all the way to the Scarborough Town Centre, but we will take you to Fairview Mall. And when that's finished, come back and talk to us. Well, that uh, the, we built it to Fairview Mall. We went back and talked to successive governments, but the money was never there. The whole purpose of the uh, Scarborough subway, or the, uh, well, both the Scarborough subway and the Shepherd subway, is to reinforce 
Uh, the Scarborough Town Centre is the economic hub of Toronto's East End. Uh, and uh, uh, can be built only if the province, uh, frankly, builds it. The city will make its contribution, but there has to be uh, a provincial uh, input of, signif of a significant amount of money. As far as um, building a subway system, I've always been supportive of a building a system. And if that means that, uh, that the province has to undertake the construction and the funding of a subway system to be operated by the TTC, then that's something that I would support. Thank you. Thank you. And you. Thank you. Um, I definitely would support the subway line uh, versus the light rail. Um, it is something that we should look at as a long term and investment as well. But again, we got to weigh the cost with the with the results as well. Uh, we've been um, told about this for many years, almost 40 years. The debate has been going on and on and on, and we've been getting no resolution as well. I want to acknowledge the great service provided by the TTC, the Toronto Transit Commission. They are doing a great service. Based on the resources they have, uh, I find that the, dr the drivers are polite and the staff is also very polite. And many of the services are 24 hours a day, so which is a fabulous service that they're providing to us. Although with the demographics changing rapidly in Scarborough and Toronto, we need the subway line to manage our resources effectively. Thank you. Good, thank you. Any uh, other questions of your fellow candidates before I turn it over to Janice? Okay, well, uh, perhaps uh, Janice is whispering here, but uh, another possible question. We had a question come up in the last um, session about uh, how do we um, look to our candidates for best performance? and, and uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, voting, uh, attending a committee meetings, and, and so on. Uh, as a, a, a successful uh, candidate, um, how will you, uh, and I know we have one here, so I got a little bit of experience, but how will you uh, kind of be a, how would you perform when you're at City Hall? And Judy, why don't we start with you? So the, the, main, uh, the main piece is uh, accountability and also, um, staying within the limits that you have, um, spending limits. So it's not like I've got the city money now and I can spend it the way I want it. So it is the city money, meaning it is the money of the people, for the people, and so we have to ensure that it is spent wisely as if it is our own. Now we are trending in this huge deficit in, in one direction. Uh, it's just increasing, so we got to look at how we're going to bridge that gap between our resources, our spending, and the deficit. Now, if we run a household, then we would budget according to our earnings will be, based on our earnings will be our spending. So the same with the city, it's not like an unlimited amount can be spent, and then we run into a huge deficit, the new government comes in, and they've got to pick up the tab, and it goes on endlessly that way. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Norm. Uh, my apologies. Um, I'm not quite sure what the question is. Well, it's uh, in terms of what is the standard of uh, performance which you think would be ideal for our councillors in terms of attending meetings, attending committee meetings, uh, voting, and so on? What's the well, th from that perspective, uh, the first thing that a councillor has to do is read the agendas. There's an enormous amount of reading involved in the job. I had a, a student ask me one time, what single thing uh, in my political life occupies the most time. And upon reflection, I replied, reading. Uh, and you'd be surprised how few councillors read their agendas. And not only reading the agendas, you have to read outside of that, because when you're reading agendas, you're getting basically a civil service perspective on the issue. So you've got to be reading uh, newspapers, you've got to be reading books, you've got to be reading magazines. In other words, in the end, the one thing that a councillor must uh, do is to bring an informed opinion to his votes, to his voice and his votes. Thank you. Michael? The number one thing that I would do as councillor is I would listen to the people. Uh, I would take all advice from the people, I would consult with them, and through my regular quarterly town hall meetings, I would ensure that I would be the direct voice of the people uh, in City Hall. Uh, that's number one and certainly like Mr. Kelly says you have to do your homework and it's not just 
constraint to the uh, agenda that you're given, but also uh, research, outside research. So that's what I would do. As someone with a legal background, I, I do uh, believe in uh, intensive research and application of uh, whatever facts you have to um, the general public. Uh, so that's what I would do. Uh, I would consult the people and uh, work closely with them. And uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in demo direct democracy, so that would be my, my number one priority. Good, thank you. I got, not sure who's got a cell phone, but okay. I'm gonna turn it back to uh, Janice, but before I do, it's been a pleasure to listen to your responses. Thank you very much for throwing your hat in the ring and uh, enjoyed working with you. Janice. Thank you, Dave. Now, just before I go to closing arguments, this, I, I know that uh, it's been a friendly debate and this is good. Friendly debates are always good. But this is also an opportunity uh, to maybe, if there's uh, some, some w disagreement or some ways that maybe you would do things differently, this would be your chance to rebut if you so desire. If not, I will then proceed to closing statements. But is there anybody that wishes to rebut anything that was said so far? Okay, this is great. So I am going to now proceed with closing statements and I will start with uh, um, two minutes for everybody. Um, and I will start with Jude. We will just wait for our, um, okay, he's good. So I want to thank, uh, first of all, uh, Lord Jesus for having mercy on Canada in spite of all our iniquities. He has been merciful to us. I want to thank you both, Janet and Dave, for your time. And I want to thank Netwin.place as well as Snap Scarborough. And I have a suggestion uh, for the solution. We looked at um, 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. It says, if my people who are called by name humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Again, if we look at Isaiah 55, verses 6 and 7, it reminds us again that uh, seek the Lord while, we, while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. And again, we want to look at Hebrews 4, verse 16 which reminds us that let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And if we look again at John 7, verse 37 and 38, it reminds us again that what the Lord Jesus said, he said, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. All these issues we've discussed about is because we are thirsty. We want to satisfy either desires of our flesh, desires of our body, desires of whatever it might be. And we think that drugs is a solution. We think gun violence is a solution. But he, here is the answer. And I ask you to follow. Thank you. Us. Thank you. Norm? Well, the um, most accurate uh, predictor of future performance uh, is past performance. Uh, and I'm delighted uh, to share with you uh, that record of past performance. The Bridletown Hub, the first wellness center in Ontario, transforming uh, an old hockey arena into a state-of-the-art community uh, center on Birchmount Road, the renovation of the seniors uh, center on Birchmount Road, a million and a half dollars to Bridlewood and Agent Court Libraries, five million dollars over the years to upgrading uh, children's playgrounds and uh, parks and uh, paths uh, in uh, Ward 40. Uh, on the city level, um, Billy Bishop Airport, the redevelopment policy of the Toronto Community Housing Company, and finally, I think, uh, as an example, of the respect that I bring to the political process and my ability to cooperate with people is my tenure as the Deputy Mayor of the City of Toronto. Thank you, Norm. Michael? 
Well, first of all, thank you, Dave and Janice, for having us today at SNAP. Thank you for, to all the viewers, the audience here. Um, it's time for real positive change in Scarborough Agent Court. It's time to elect a fresh, responsible, hardworking counselor who will work with the people and for the people, a team player who will work with the other 24 counselors to make the City of Toronto great again. It's time to elect someone who will stand up for the economically disadvantaged while also working to ensure that we prosper again, all within a fiscally prudent model. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to elect someone whose number one priority will be to ensure that the people can actually afford to live in this city. Uh, someone who will fight to keep our communities safe. Someone who will work hard with small business owners, the backbone of our economy, to create more jobs so we can in turn prevent crime and poverty. Direct accountability, direct responsibility. To the people, for the people. I ask that you go to the polling stations and elect someone new. I ask that you vote for Michael Korzniewski for Toronto City Council in Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you very much. Well, thank you all. I think um, at some of the response, I feel like I went to church. <laughs> so uh, perhaps if the pastor will forgive me if he doesn't see me in the next little while. But thank you all for a, a very good discussion, um, delivering your messages. I we really uh, appreciate that appreciate it on behalf of Dave and myself. I'd like to thank you and thank you the audience for coming out and listening to the debate. We remind you as what was said here to vote on October the 22nd for that candidate that uh, impressed you here today. So thank you and we are looking forward to Ward 23. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Deb. The end of Ward 23.